everyone. In today's edition of Zapper Fireside, we have Aditya Kulkarni, who heads Data Insights at Zapper Media Labs. Aditya has an interesting background. He's looked at data analytics almost pretty much all through his career. He comes with a background in the media industry, having worked with two stalwarts like Star and Z. He's also spent time on the media agency side, having worked with Group M. And for a short stint, also worked at Philips Lighting. And he's been with Zapper for uh, quite some time now. And the pleasure is ours to have him here today at Zapper Fireside. So let's kick it off, Aditya. First of all, would just like to know, why a career in data insights? Uh, okay, I'll, I would like to answer this on a very philosophical level. Uh, I think uh, you know it is it is all about a continuous uh, uh, quest for uh, inquiry. You know, uh, so it's not about you know uh, churning out big data, uh, but it's about asking those bigger questions mm -hmm. uh, rather than saying that I know all the answers because the moment you say that I know the answers, the inquiry stops there. Fair uh, enough. Interesting. And on the same philosophical note. It is generally said that you can beat down the data to give you insights, yeah. whatever you want. Yeah. So from that angle, how has the journey been in terms of really getting to the insights which the data provides rather than the insights you want the data to provide? Yeah. Uh, so like I said, uh, it is an, uh, it, it's a continuous inquiry because uh, if you, you know, try to create answers, uh, it will not be relevant to the business because mm -hmm. uh, for once you may be able to get away with it, uh, but the moment it fails to uh, justify the ROIs or it doesn't connect with the business, uh, you'll be exposed. So there is no other way than to, uh, it's a lot of hard work. You have to deep dive, you have to, you have to be honest. So uh, like I said, it's not about saying that I know the answer. You have to be okay with the ignorance. Either you say that, you know, this is what I know and this is what I really don't know. I mean, that's... Understood. So as an outsider, a yeah. uh, lot of us use insights, a lot of us use data. But developing a career in data seems to be a very dry role, if yeah. I could use that word. Yeah. Yeah. Because from the outsiders, you seem to be more geeky looking at yeah. Excels all the yeah. time. Yeah. But what gives you that kick? It's a very uh, individual specific thing. So for me, I'm kind of a, I mean, I love the philosophical aspects of data. You know, it's uh, the kick I that get from uh, this kind of role is, you know, uh, you are continuously asking yourself bigger questions, you know, why you are doing this, mm -hmm. uh, what is the next thing that you want to step into. Fair enough. Coming to the media industry, so traditionally the industry has had limited avenues of data. Yeah, data yeah. And now all of a sudden it looks like there is a plethora of plethora. different data streams which are available for the industry. Yeah. How has the industry been coping up? Uh, it's, it's been difficult for them. Uh, if if you look at uh, over the last 40 years, what has happened in India, you know, it started with radio, then came DD, uh, then we had the decade of uh, 90s when uh, satellite came to India. The next decade was about proliferation of uh, satellite channels. And this current decade, we are seeing that there is a massive over, overlap of digital with uh, television. So. This was happening at a, a content consumption level. You know, there were new formats which were emerging. Uh, media consumption moved from just audio to audio visual, mm -hmm. from audio visual to uh, more exciting and immersive formats like HD. And we are no, now talking about uh, VR being the next frontier. Mm -hmm. So that is the one uh, major transformation which has happened. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if you look at uh, the way disposable income has increased in India, uh, post-liberalization, especially last 20, 30 years, there was this sudden uh, you know, creation of wealth that has happened. Uh, now, as a result, so these two things were happening simultaneously. So there were newer content formats uh, which were emerging. Uh, and at the same time, uh, the incomes, uh, the income of country uh, uh, went up. Now this has uh, segmented the consumers. True. 
uh, to a great extent. You know, even in one family, you could have four different psychographics. Uh, so all this while, while media industry has been using uh, certain uh, uh, platforms for measurement, but now what is really challenging is when you have such diverse uh, country, when you have so much fra fragmented audience and uh, content format which is continuously evolving. So this requires, you know, having. Uh, real access to you know what consumers who who my consumer is and uh, what consumers are really thinking about rather than you know uh, evaluating on a very uh, structured uh, uh, platform so uh, i think industry so far has managed but uh, somewhere I, because I've also been on the brand side, I've seen that agencies are uh, agencies and both brands are struggling to uh, you know justify the ROIs because uh, uh, because it's becoming increasingly difficult to uh, sharply target your audience. It's very interesting. So at one extent, we say that there is a lot of additional data which is available for the industry. At the other end, we say that it is getting difficult to justify ROI yeah. as well as do a very specific, specific targeting. targeting yeah. So where do the two come in? So ideally data should have actually solved this problem. Yeah. Uh, I think what has also happened is because uh, there has been a particular way industry has been used to. Mm -hmm. uh, so somewhere I think they are also taking time to you know move on to the uh, newer ways of measurement trying to convince clients because there is one uh, currency of the market uh, which continues to exist and there are emerging sources of data so uh, I think that is where intelligence is required at every level you need uh, you know as a uh, as an agency person you have to be intelligent enough to uh, you know differentiate uh, grain from the shaft uh, or True. the same thing applies to uh, clients also uh, so from that perspective, what you're saying is that the industry is still trying to catch up, catch up. and yeah. make sense of the yeah, different sense of yeah. sources of data which are available. Yeah. But interestingly, what, what has really happened and the way you described it is that the data has become decentralized. Yeah. So instead of one traditional body controlling all yeah. of that data, yeah. now it is available in different pockets. Yeah. So I'm guessing one of the challenges is also kind of understanding which are the right data sets right. to pick yeah. and therefore what kind of insights you really yeah. draw out of those. Yeah. 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 So I think which I think will uh, involve a lot of experimentation so maybe True. Uh, you know industry has to keep on experimenting uh, and try and understand what is it that is really working for them what is it that is not really working for them and I think that is how uh, as a fraternity we will evolve because only when you let go of the past uh, is when you see some future. But have we as an industry even identified the right problems we want to solve for using the data? Uh, I think to some extent we do know what are the problems. We know that, uh, you know, as a matter of fact that we are not able to really measure. So for instance, simple things like uh, if I'm doing a multimedia campaign, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I have always looked at each medium in isolation and looked at matrix, uh, but I have never been able to, uh, you know, it could be for the lack of uh, 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 any methodology to uh, which uh, kind of gives me multimedia impact. Mm -hmm. So, uh, therefore, I do not know whether uh, the investments that I'm making across uh, media are they justified or what are the right trade offs that I need to make, what are the right choices that I need to make. Uh, I have always been uh, doing that based on uh, each medium's uh, matrix in isolation. So, this is one definite problem. Uh, Right. So, so the m different media still continues to operate in silos. In silos. And what data is helping is the way it is helping is bridging the gap between these different yeah. silos. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. From that perspective, again, this is something which I have seen in my experience that when you go and talk about digital, and digital as a platform has a lot of data behind it. Yeah. But the kind of questions which are asked or the kind of metrics digital is held up to seem to be extremely complicated sometimes and difficult 
to prove. Whereas you get a feeling sometimes that those metrics were never asked of the traditional media. Okay. So to that extent, is the industry being unfair to digital by asking too much, which was never asked of the traditional offline media? Uh, uh, partly true, <laughs> but I would also say that you know you have to uh, in a way sympathize uh, with people <laughs> because you need to understand you know they have been evaluating things differently. Fair enough. From that perspective, what companies like Zapper can actually help provide to the marketing fraternity yeah. in terms of helping them drive a better adoption of digital. Uh, so I think it's uh, really exciting because uh, you know here at Zapper we have like profiled over 60 million audiences, mm -hmm. uh, and it's all about the possibilities that we can do with this data that we have of 60 million audiences. Uh, so I would like to talk about a couple of you know real-time case studies uh, that we are working on. So one of the leading broadcaster uh, approached us and said. Uh, you know, they want to uh, plan their content buying decisions uh, such that they are able to differentiate what premium audiences are consuming versus what masses are consuming. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were saying that it's uh, with the existing uh, various uh, uh, data streams, it's difficult to really differentiate uh, between what an affluent uh, audience is consuming versus what masses are consuming. So what can uh, Zapper uh, do for us? Uh, so one of the idea that we thought was, you know, uh, what if uh, we could look at uh, people who are consuming uh, high-end uh, phones, uh, people who are using hand phones and uh, uh, who are uh, located in uh, uh, upmarket uh, areas across uh, top 20, 30 cities. Uh, so when we shared this approach with the broadcaster, they really liked this idea and therefore they saw a possibility of now uh, doing something differently. Uh, you never know, th there will be errors, uh, but those errors won't uh, you know, take you away from truth. They will incrementally lead you towards the truth. Right. But this uh, 60 million profiled users you spoke about, that's a humongous amount of data. Yeah. So. How is this data helping you understand the end consumer better? So you spoke about the yeah. different uh, segments being available within yeah. a family of four in a household. Yeah. 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 Now, for ages, broadcasters have struggled to kind of differentiate uh, one GRP on one channel versus another GRP yeah. on another channel. Yeah. So with the 60 million profile users, are you any closer to doing that? Yeah, so there's another interesting project that we are currently working on, which is around uh, the whole user profiling uh, exercise. Uh, what we are trying to do is using this whole 60 million base that we have, we are trying to further segment and uh, uh, even create finer segments, which will uh, sharply differentiate uh, themselves. Uh, so uh, there are quite a few interesting uh, uh, projects that uh, we have worked upon. Uh, one was uh, for Maharashtra, what we actually did was um, we actually uh, differentiated, uh, we, we created different segments uh, of the uh, sociocultural regions mm -hmm. and looked at how, let's say, a sociocultural region of Vidarbha uh, behaves differently than. Uh, than Bombay or uh, a socio-cultural region of Marathwada uh, consumes content differently than uh, south of Maharashtra. That is one thing. Uh, the other thing that uh, we are doing is basically uh, using various filters uh, such as whether uh, the individual is, uh, is a consumer of HD or SD, uh, what kind of uh, phone does he own, uh, does, is he a owner of uh, high-end phone or is he a owner of uh, medium-end phone. Uh, so using these kind of filters and uh, uh, creating these newer segments, uh, we have been able to uh, segment audiences uh, and profile them uh, in, a, in a much attractive uh, manner. Understood. So <clears throat> we've been talking about a lot of work which is being done for broadcasters. But if you look at the entire value chain of, the, of where it starts, right, from content creators, yeah to uh, broadcasters, yeah. to the media agencies in the middle, yeah. and brands and then the end yeah. consumers. Yeah. Where is it that there is a maximum urgency 
of utilizing this massive pool of data which is available? Uh, I think uh, in terms of urgency, I think the onus currently is definitely a lot on uh, broadcasters because ultimately they are the content creators. Mm -hmm. If they uh, accurately reflect the uh, uh, attitudes and mindset of uh, larger India, only then they can create right content which will appeal to the correct segment. Only then agencies or, or uh, brands can uh, actually connect with those set of audiences. So it, it is uh, like you said, you know, it's, it's an entire value chain. Uh, but at the same time, the onus lies tremendously with the, uh, with the broadcasters to uh, correctly capture the uh, attitudes of uh, audiences. Understood. Now, across, if you look at this value chain, the media agency plays a critical role in bridging the gap between content creators and broadcasters and the brands and the consumers on the other side. And they're right in the middle. How is their role changing given that there is so much of additional information which is available? Yeah. Uh, so, yes, their role is becoming challenging, but I think uh, media agencies are also trying to become a strategic partner in clients' uh, planning process. So, uh, rather than just facilitating the inventory exchange, mm -hmm. uh, media agencies are now evaluating the various data sources uh, which are available. Uh, how do we uh, understand the psychographics of my brand's TG? Uh, and you know, not just evaluate media, but also how do you uh, become a part of the entire business planning process itself? Uh, so become more strategic partner than just facilitating the media inventory exchange. Understood. And from that perspective, how are the brands uh, really changing the way they interact with their media agencies? Yeah and with broadcasters in general? So, uh, historically, uh, what used to happen was uh, uh, brands would uh, uh, first have their business planning process done, they will have their uh, annual targets for uh, their uh, portfolio of brands, and then basis the targets they used to then involve agencies. Mm -hmm. But currently what is happening is, right at the business planning process itself, they are involving agencies, which uh, and they are involving both media as well as creative agencies to uh, actually plan the next financial year which uh, current which correctly captures the learnings for last year and what is it that we want to do so uh, at that stage itself agencies are involved in the uh, brainstorming process of uh, how do we do business plans uh, which uh, which are in sync with the consumer understood it seems like the industry is in a fairly exciting yeah. phase yeah. right now coming back to what you do here at Zapper. Yeah. I'm guessing there is a lot of challenges you face yeah. in terms of getting data, understanding what the right data is. Yeah. So just wanted to get your perspective on what are the bigger challenges you face yeah. in terms of getting these insights to our customers. Sure. Uh, so one, uh, obviously the scale and the velocity with which we operate is immense. Uh, I don't think so anybody in uh, India has ever dealt with such large scale and uh, uh, this velocity. Mm -hmm. uh, so therefore it demands having uh, consistent and reliable data. Now in order to do that we have to uh, you know uh, look at our methodology, see how we are currently evaluating. You spent a lot of time in this particular field yeah. and apart from having spent time, so much time in the industry but if you look at young uh, people who are just coming out of college thinking of developing a career in data insights yeah. What would you advise them? What are the key skills which are required in this field yeah. for a person to succeed? So like we have been discussing that, you know, the, f the field is evolving mm -hmm. uh, and there are multiple ways to, to be part of this uh, field. You know, you could be a statistics expert, you could be uh, a data analyst who's, who comes from a computer science background, uh, or you could uh, uh, have hands-on experience on working on certain uh, tools. Uh, uh, as you go along, you can pick the other skills. But at, but at the same time, like I said, you know, uh, one has to have a boundless energy and uh, this continuous uh, continuous quest for uh, knowing the unknown or <laughs> trying to know the unknown. I like the way you put it. So, <clears throat> very interesting f uh, field indeed. But in terms of the market side of it. Yeah. 
how is that changing? So are customers expecting more of insight as a service or are they looking at just pure data and they want to draw insights on their own or uh, is it more consulting? Uh, I think at this stage they would, uh, you know, till the time, uh, till the time they are able to understand these various uh, streams of data, uh, I think for now they would want to have clear, actionable insights that can be derived out of the data. Mm -hmm. uh, going forward, you know, as uh, you know, as the field expands, they may have in-house uh, setups which will uh, further look at data. Got it. So from that perspective, what you're saying is that the skill set required yeah. is not just about handling yeah. large data streams, yeah. but it is also about drawing, drawing the right insights. Yeah. Yeah. And then being able to communicate the right insights yeah. which match the which business yeah. objectives for the client. For the client. Yeah. Very interesting. And if you look forward into the future, what are the key priorities for you as a leader of the data insights at Zapper in terms of what are we trying to solve for? What are the new things you're working on? Uh, so one thing that we definitely uh, have to do uh, on an urgent basis is uh, focus a lot on automation. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of tasks that we are doing which are repetitive uh, and which uh, do consume a lot of uh, human hours. Uh, so we have to make sure that we first automate these uh, secondly, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, predictive analytics which can be done. Uh, there is an interesting project that we're working on uh, with uh, data science team uh, for predicting the uh, mobile ad inventory uh, mm -hmm. so that uh, as, a, as a company we are able to monetize our revenues better. Uh, so uh, immediately I think two things will be priority. One will be uh, automation and the second will be working on uh, interesting analytics projects. Got it. So when you say automation, yeah. it is more about leveraging the database yeah. you already have to generate more insights. So it is yeah. the data learning by itself yeah. Yeah. and helping you create more data out on yes. top of it. Yes. Interesting. And how has the journey been so far? Oh, it, it has been hell of a ride. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because, uh, so personally I had uh, been on all the sides, been on the broadcaster brand as well as uh, agency, and I had like personally dealt with these problems. Uh, so what I try to do is, uh, you know, first try to relate with the, with the client uh, with whom we are working, uh, understand uh, the problems that they are going through, uh, and try, try to uh, develop solutions uh, as per their uh, needs. So like we have been discussing that, uh, you know, mediums have been uh, functioning in silos. Right. Uh, and it has always been a difficult uh, thing for uh, brands to actually measure the multimedia impact of their activities. Mm -hmm. uh, which, because it had uh, an immediate impact on the way they plan their budgets. Uh, so one thing that we are trying to do at Zapper is also try and uh, include uh, radio as well as cinema in our uh, uh, ecosystem uh, and over a period of time maybe OTT uh, because that will then really help uh, a brand uh, to strategically allocate their budgets and make those right choices in terms of how much do I really need to spend on TV versus digital versus cinema. So with this, we'll be able to drive integrated yeah. marketing yeah. approach yeah. across yeah. all these yeah. media. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you mean yeah. to say? Yeah. So uh, all this while, uh, agencies and brands have been you know, using words like uh, integrated uh, strategic planning. Uh -huh. I think if we are able to do this, this will be the real integrated strategic <laughs> planning. <laughs> Fair enough. Great. Thank you, Aditya, for a very interesting and insightful discussion on how data is changing the media industry. I think it's still a fair bit of time till the contours of the industry develop and we'll wait to see how they do develop. But thanks a lot for your perspective. It's been, it's been great talking to you. And thank you all for watching. We'll bring you further conversations on Zapper Fireside where we bring in thought leaders in the industry and talk to them about top of mind problems for the marketers in the country. Thank you once again.